With the E-Class all-terrain, Mercedes offers a compelling option in the market segment for large, luxurious executive estates with four-wheel drive capability and SUV-style looks. As soon as Mercedes launched its air body control air suspension system in this 10th generation W213 series E-Class range in 2016, a model variant like this all-terrain derivative became possible. Air suspension is, after all, the key thing that differentiates a full-sized estate with SUV capability from a mid-sized model with this kind, like, uh, say, Volkswagen's Passat Alltrack. When driving normally, it allows the car to ride 29 millimeters higher than an ordinary E-Class estate, although four 14 mils of that increment is accounted for by the larger, more serious set of tyres that come fitted to this version. Select the extra all-terrain setting that's been added to the usual dynamic select driving mode system and at speeds of under 90 miles an hour, the air suspension will rise by a further 20 millimetres. Now that is enough for 156 millimetres of total ride height and that's sufficient to allow this E-Class to cruise across rocky tracks that would seriously damage the underside of any ordinary large executive estate car. This model gets pretty much the same formatic permanent system that's optional on the ordinary E-Class models. Uh, the package here set up just as it is on the fire-breathing Mercedes-AMG variants to send 31% of drive to the front axle and 69% to the rear. Uh, potential buyers will be pleased to hear that this car can tow brilliantly too and it makes very good use of its standard uh, electrically retractable tow hitch. However, the 2,100 kilo total brake towing weight capacity is a little down on the 2,500 kilo figure boasted by Audi and Volvo rivals. Still, that shouldn't be too much of an issue for most owners who will appreciate the prodigious 620 newton meters of torque on offer from the 3 litre 258 bhp V6 diesel engine. The only one on offer to E Class all terrain buyers, for our market anyway, uh, who are limited to the E350D derivative that we're trying here. It returns 41.5 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 179 grams per kilometre of CO2. That's about the same as you get from a version of the brand's GLE luxury SUV fitted out with the same engine. The aesthetic changes made to create this rough road orientated E-Class variant are mercifully subtle and appropriate. After all, you'll probably be buying this car because you don't want an SUV. The changes that have been made are most evident at the front, where the twin finned front grille has broader vented central spokes, more like those you'll see on the brand's GLA and GLC crossover models. From the side, the differences over any standard well-equipped E-Class estate model are limited to the black plastic trimming around the wheel arches and a lower side skirt highlighted by this chrome strip. Now inside, the cabin is pretty much as it would be in any other well-specified E-Class estate. Features unique to this variant restricted to floor mats with all-terrain lettering and this rather bright light carbon grain aluminium trim that's used across the dash and into the doors. Um, standard for all-terrain buyers is this command online center dash infotainment system with its classy 12.3 inch monitor. Also included is a virtual instrument binnacle display of the same size, creating one huge flow floating style screen that flows right across the dash and is framed by subtle ambient lighting. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now the first thing you'll find is more than ample space. Uh, if the front passengers have their seats at the lowest setting, you might find room for your feet slightly limited, but otherwise the rear footwells are big and broad. Let's move around to the boot, which features this powered tailgate. Now the hatch raises to reveal the largest luggage area in the class, rated at 640 litres. Small wonder that Mercedes is the only brand in the segment able to offer the option of a couple of extra boot-mounted chairs. Although for some reason you can't have that on this all-terrain variant. If you are able to flatten the main parts of the back seat, you'll do it via these neat buttons you'll find on either side of the cargo sidewalls, uh, and you'll find further ones just inside the rear doors too. Once you've activated these, a capacity of up to 1,820 litres can be freed up. 
Not everyone who has to tow heavy loads or traverse muddy tracks necessarily needs an SUV. The E-Class All-Terrain offers an alternative option to large luxury 4x4s that might actually suit some adventurous dog walkers, alpinists and caravanners rather better. It's got more interior space than a comparable large luxury SUV. It uh, feels a little less clunky to drive and it has a lower loading bay that'll make it easier for dogs to hop in and out of. In short, you can see the appeal.